any particular multivitamins or anything in the water on rest on rest time, which you know is winter. What we're saying now. No, but what I will do, and I will be doing it any time now. I will put them on 13 days of Parastop against the Paratyphus. 13 days. Yeah. Oh, 10 days Parastop. Is that the name of it? Para yeah, Parastop. Yes. It's, it's a well-known thing. It's in all the books. And that's to clear all the system out, is it? No, that's no. That's that's a, a, pre a pre preventive against Paratyphus. Right. Is there any anything else? Uh... Well, there will be. Obviously, they'll have had a canker treatment since they finished racing, and that's it. We're going on to young bird racing now. Obviously, first of all, I mean, basically, they'll be on. Do you fly in the darkness system? Yes. So uh, obviously, you'll have the time. Do you put, you know, as your party youngsters from your stock birds or your widow cox early season. Would they be put straight onto the darkness or at a set date, what you think is needed? No, they would not be put straight onto the uh, darkness system, Steve. I don't put them on the darkness system till the 1st of April. Right. And I leave them on for till the 1st of June. So they're on it like the uh, 1st of eight April? Eight weeks. They're on it eight weeks yes. and took off the 1st of June? Yes. So obviously uh, your, your first young bird races will be, what, middle of July, is it, as a rule? Yes. So the every pigeon, would you usually go to every pigeon's got to go to your first young bird race, or would you? Well, think... normally, Steve, I'm very, very cautious with the young birds, and um, I, I, I will not, you know, I don't generally put all my eggs in one basket. Right. Unfortunately, this year I did. Yeah. The weather, say, the weather forecast was excellent. We was only at Leicester, 71 miles. Everything seemed good. Mm. I'd got a team of about 41 youngsters, because I don't breed a hundred of youngsters to keep for myself. And um, I thought, well, we'll send them. Unfortunately, we had a smash. Everybody in the area, I think everybody all over the country, had 50% of the pigeons missing on the day. No reason for it whatsoever. The weather was good. Nobody can... There was no clashing as far as we know. Just that half the pigeons didn't return. Mine included. What can you do? Right, so, so that set me really back. So you'll be thinking probably next year going back to Correct. going back to like Correct, sending fifty yes. percent in first place. Yes, but then it 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 it, it, it then ups, it upsets the whole region because then you think to yourself, well, I've only got half the team back, as did everybody. I've only got half the team back. I need so many young cocks to take forward for next season. So I've got to be very careful what I'm doing. So I was very selective how I sent the pigeons for the rest of the season. And if the weather forecast was very bad, I didn't send them. Well, that's, uh, that's, that's why, uh, a wise decision well, after knowing yes. what, what Fortunately happened. now, I have enough good young cocks to replace anything that I've either lost or I'm taking out the team or I'm putting it into the stock loft. So they, which you, I will show you those young cocks as we go through the, as, you know, the process. But... And they're all multi and beautiful. And I also bred a few, I generally breed a few later on and just put them in a section as a backup. They're not on the dark. But unfortunately, again with them, first, first race for them, we had another bad do where everybody and half the pigeons was missing. Right. But anyway, the work back, so we're all right. We've got we've got enough to, to see us through, like you know what I mean. Right. So I'm I'm I'm, I'm trying to be a hundred percent honest with you, Steve. I don't make it out that we we breed fifty youngers and keep fifty youngers. We same as anybody else. You lose good ones as well as bad ones. Right. Unfortunately, obviously, there's a lot of mishaps. A lot. Of, Correct. But, but it's nice that you are being honest, John. Yeah. It's much appreciated. Well, this is it. I mean, this is this is life, isn't it, Steve? You know, what I mean, you get you you get your upsets as well as your your good things, like you know what I mean. Yeah. Every day, like you said, every every day is different. Oh yes. So on racing these young birds, um, obviously up to the first race, which you said was a bad race. Mm. Uh, how far had they been trained to? Twenty-five miles. And how many chucks would you say from first to the last chuck up Ten. to the first race? Ten in total. Mm. But they were obviously what they ranging though, uh, well round the world. Yeah, they, flew, they were flying very well. They were in very good order. They were coming very well from training. Very well indeed. I mean, if we go to Redford Bridge for me, which is 25 miles, they're only going to Leicester with the first race, aren't they? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, 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 there's no problem with that. I mean, I've jumped pigeons straight into 165 miles and they've come well. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, So coming to that now, John, obviously 10 chucks up to the first race. Mm. You've just mentioned now, then you train twice a week. Do you train twice a week after the first race, all the way through to the end of the programme? 
Not really, no. Uh, if I think they need it, see if I send them. If I don't, I don't. So some weeks they don't get any training? No. Just exercise like you would with cocks? That's right, yes. Same, same pattern, yes. same feeding system? Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't feed the young birds like I, race, that, like I use the racing cocks. Can you explain yes, what you do then? Yes, I just buy a good young bird mix from the local uh, supplier. Uh, basically, no maize to start with and then add in maize as they get a bit further up the road. So this programme, this system, what Jeff Andrews told you, that's only for old bird racing? Well, no, it's for two, but I don't use it for me young birds. You don't use no. it? He can use it, though. It's all explained. It, yes. right. It's all explained to you if you want to use it, you see, yeah. What about young bird motivation? Had he, uh, had he kept together all the time as old cocks and ends, or this, like, ends no, in one side? just kept together, Steve. So, the basically natural system? Yes. And they do what they want, so yes. that's your, that is your motiv that, yeah. motivation? Yeah. You, you explain you're not a big training man, John, but um, before your young birds actually go in a training pannier, do you give them any overnight training for future in life? Like in your corridors with water on? Uh, yes, uh, miss, Can you explain that then, John? Yes, yeah. well, normally what I do, Steve, I put my my training baskets there yeah. and leave them one in each. I can only put one at once, but I put it there and take the thing out and the, and the young birds learn themselves to come into that basket and they'll sit there very content. Right. So there, when it comes to basketing pigeons, they're, they're half trained themselves, they'll run in there. Right. No problem, and I'll do the same with the other side, you see. And same as you say, then I get one of my ordinary baskets and put the drinkers on and leave them overnight in the baskets so that they get used to drinking and eating out of those yeah. Out of the Would market. you do that often up to the up to the racing, or just two or three times? Two or three just, times. Just so yeah, that they brainwash yeah, for later yeah. on. That's right. Whether yeah. you're flying a young bird Midland National Race and that. Yes. Does your best young birds always make your best old birds, or can it can it vary? Like you, you, some good young birds are the best all the life, and some are late to learn and they, they fly terrible, and even as yearlings come out as two year olds. Well, to answer that one, Steve, I'll go back to 1997, yeah. whereby I had a team of. Of, of youngsters across the other side of the yard, across the other side of the farm, where he used to fly there. And this team of youngsters wasn't on the dark, because I didn't know what dark was then, I only just started back in the spot, and I didn't know a lot of these things, you see. Right. Now, I'd entered three, pigeon, three pigeons in the Sheffield Gold Ring. You'll remember them Sheffield Gold Rings. You I, have, they? I was flying them myself. That's right. And the pigeons... I'd only just had a couple of races. What year was that, John? 97. That's the year I, were, I won short of £3,000, same year. That That's was the same right. race, I was yeah. second in it, all the way up. Right. Well, we sent these three pigeons. Yep. And never got a pigeon on the day. Right. Nothing. Right. In fact, they was coming all week. Yep. My pigeons. The, the lad up in Thorn here, who, who was on the dark and was trading twice a day right. and putting youngsters and everything, absolutely annihilated us. And I couldn't understand why. Yeah. I don't know why, because he was on the dark and I wasn't. But not one young cock in my shed took a prize that season. Not right. one. Right. Some of the ends did, but no cocks. Right. The following season, Steve... We won 23 times first prize, five times first fed, with the same five pigeons. times second fed, fifth champion loft of Great Britain in the Van Robyce right. champion loft of Great Britain competition, and we didn't know that was on till the end of the season. That was with the same cocks that had done nothing as young ones. Yeah. So. But I do believe, though, you're right, John. Uh, obviously, you can't compete with the, the darkness pigeons, which mine were all on the darkness that year, and it... You have to be in the darkness, but Correct. it does prove mm. them good pigeons, what were in rags and, mm. and all that, it's proved the good brains will come out. If they'd have been on the darkness, you could have maybe won the race or whatever, as young birds, and that was a disadvantage. Well, they actually, they actually annihilated the lads who was on the darkness the following That's season. That's what I'm saying, John. Because you yeah. was then on a level playing field, wasn't you? Yes, correct. In fact, one of those cocks, Steve, is in that shed now. The old racker cock is a 1997 pigeon. One of his youngsters this year scored twice for a lad up in North Yorkshire. And how old is he? 13 years old? Well, it will be, yeah, 1997, yeah. yeah. So it just shows. And he, I mean, he topped the Fed the following season and was a fantastic pigeon. And all his brothers, all them brass penning cocks. But yet, as youngsters, you want to get a shilling for them. And this is why, Steve, I'll always say this to young fanciers. 
I will never ever get rid of a young cock of my race team. Don't matter how good or bad it is. Right. I will always give it a chance the following season, even if I had to fly to on a section on its own. Because sometimes the they come out be better than the job. You do not know which one's going to make the best yearlings. Right, fair comment. First of all, how many pairs, stock pairs, would you start off having for your own You know, for, for basically own use, whatever you have them for your own or whatever. How many stock pairs would you have got? How many have you got in total? I've got roughly 40 pairs of stock pigeons. 40 pair? Yeah. 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 I have 20. Two pairs of stock birds, which are prisoners, right. and I have 18 pairs of stock birds, which are retired from the race team uh, at the back end of 2008. And they was all pigeons that had been raced and was all winning some real good pigeons among those as well. Right. And I'm gradually uh, swapping them over, you see, Steve. That's why I have so many at the moment. Yeah. I'm gradually working them, so I just want need one team of stock birds and I want them all to be able to fly out, apart from probably the odd one that, you know, you're fetching. Right. Um, when would you actually pair these stock pigeons up then, John? Um, it varies sometimes. Generally, I will pair up in, in, in December. Yeah. And uh, I obviously have a few young birds to sell. And I, you know, some of the lads want the, per the birds very early, so I'll let them have the early ones. It doesn't bother me which ones they have. Right. I'll let them have the early ones, or some don't want them until a little bit later, depending where they're going and things like that. 